Cindy. Mad Dog Unleashed. Jack, good afternoon. How are you today, pal? What do you have? Jack. Hey, hey, Chris. Thanks for having me on. How you doing? I love your show. Good to have you aboard, Jack. Thank you. What's on your mind now today? Fire away. Hey, I totally agree. Uh, Big Ten's been overrated since 2000, the last title. We hear this year after year after year, going into the tournament, how great the Big Ten is. And year after year after year, they, I mean, granted, they do, they have gone to a few title games, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I think they're totally overrated. Um, I wanted to I wanted to ask you about Tim Timmy. He's a fun player to watch, don't you think? I've been watching. Yeah, very good player. Since, yeah, he's a nice player. He, he the passes 70s. the ball well. He can shoot a three. He, uh, you know, he plays back to his basket, front of the basket. He's a well. He's a he's a good player. No question about it. Uh, you know, he'll make an NBA roster probably. He's 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 a good player. I'm with you 100. percent and, you know, Kispert's a pretty good player. The point guard's good. The transfer is good from Florida. They got a nice team. I mean, they got a very, very nice team. They're a legit ball club. I mean, they're not, yeah, you know, UCLA 1968, but they are a nice ball club. And they still got to finish the deal. They got two games to win. And from what I've seen, I, you know, I did not like the way Baylor played the other night. From what I've seen, they should do it. Uh, they should beat UCLA. I know UCLA is on a nice run right now and controlling tempo, but they should beat them there, Jack. And, and then they see who stands at the end. I think it will be Baylor, and I think that they will be Baylor too. Gonzaga should win the championship. Go ahead. What else? UCLA is not a Cinderella. No way. I mean, no we're way. talking about a legendary school, and have you been to that campus? I mean, how hard can it be to recruit to Southern California in that beautiful campus? It's absolutely le- legendary. Now, where I'm from, Butler – would be considered a Cinderella there you go. when they went yes, they back would. to back and yes, they, they lost would. both, but that was a Cinderella. Yeah, that's a good point. Well done, Jack. I agree. The Butler Duke thing, that's just, that's the definition of Cinderella. Stevens with Butler, Gordon Hayward. Now, Hayward was a hell of a player. Uh, he was only a freshman, but he was a hell of a player. That's a Cinderella, 2009 with that Butler team. The next year when they played UConn was a disaster. They got killed. And that's, of course, the famous Steve Torrey phone call uh, at the half when it was basically 21-20 because they both couldn't score, and Steve thought he was watching Picasso, one of the great college games, quote, I swear, one of the great college games I've ever seen, Steve Torrey to Chris Russo at the half of Butler UConn, which turned out to be an av- which was a bad game at the time and turned out to be one of the worst finals in the history of the sport. But Steve loved it uh, from that standpoint, which was fascinating. Uh, here's John in New York. He's with us here, and he's on Mad Dog Unleashed. John, good afternoon. How are you today, pal? What do you have? Johnny. I'm good, Chris, and I'm from Indiana, and you've not to mention that IU was undefeated the year before they went undefeated, when, and Scott May fractured his arm, and they lost to Kentucky 92-90 in the Elite Eight, one of the best games you'll ever see if you watch it on rerun. You need to uh, listen to our NCAA podcast that we did there, John, because um, that on the Sirius XM app, because we obviously talked a lot about that particular Indiana team in May's junior year and obviously did a lot on the senior year. So we're on top of that. Good job on your part. What else? One other, Go ahead. One other thing, Chris. One other yes. thing. John yes. Wooden was at UCLA 15 years before he won a national championship. Yeah, uh, John, that too. Good call. Well done. We he, did that on our podcast. And you, uh, John Wooden got the UCLA in 6 and 48. He didn't win his first title there into the – uh, 62, six, let's see, uh, was it 61, 62, 62, 63, and six, no, 63, 64, and 64, 65. Those are the two years for John. Tony in Dallas, Mad Dog Unleashed. Tony, good afternoon. It's your turn. How are you today, pal? Tony, let me hear. Come on, Christopher. You can't do generational comparisons like that with some of these basketball teams. The game has changed so much. I could give you a North Carolina team that didn't make it to the championship game with Vince Carter, Jerry Sackhouse, Rasheed Wallace. They would thump that Indiana team. Come on, Chris. You can't, oh, no way. That, that is, no that's way. unfair. That's not fair, No Chris. way. The that, that right Indiana, now, Indiana, Indiana played. Uh, Tony, I don't know if you're even old enough to know about Indiana team. You're in your low, early 40s. That, that Indiana team, they lost one game in two years. They were 61-1, and one, and they did it in the Big Ten. That was a I understand wonderful, that, Chris. I, wonderful I understand. Team. Wonderful. I understand that. The style of basketball, you, you okay, let, let's agree to this. The style of basketball, the pace of the game, and the composition of the athlete 
has multiplied by a thousand since then. So I just think if you want well, let me to ask compare, you, well, let me ask you a question. You think the UCLA team uh, could beat Rasheed Wallace? Oh yeah. You think oh, well, you yeah. think you, yes, you think yes. I'll send her, yes. you think you think because Jabbar would figure out a way to beat Jerry Stockhouse in a championship game. That, do you that, think okay, Bill you well, think Bill Wolf Do you think Bill now, Wolf and Jamal Wilkes, Tony, two of the great pros you're ever gonna see? Great, great players. Do you think Walton and Wilkes would figure out a way to beat uh, uh, Vince Carter? And who never played anything uh, in a big uh, game. Now you're talking. Oh, come on. Now you're talking. Well, they played so before far, Indiana. They uh, played before yeah, Indiana. They played that's before true. Indiana, not after. If uh, okay. Indiana okay. played after the Walton team. Matter of fact, Indiana lost to Walton in Walton's first championship in a semi in the uh, in the final four. When Knight was his second year there. Not fair, Tony. All I'm, Not fair. All I'm saying. All I'm saying is, if you want, and I understand your 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 angst against uh, Gonzaga. But if you look at the other side, Chris, you were talking about Cinderella's and all that. Uh, the point that I wanted to make is what Scott Drew has done at Baylor. In 2003, when that whole Dave Bliss uh, players murdering each other, Dave Bliss covering it up, that whole tuition scandal, people forget that the NCAA wanted to give Baylor the death penalty with sports. Then you, on top of that, you had the Art Brow scandal what Scott Drew has done since 2003 to now to go to the Final Four and completely reshape that program, he's got amazing players, Chris. That is going to be a great championship game with those three guards and their athleticism going up against Gonzaga. Uh, that is – talk about a Cinderella story with coaching. I, I like – Drew, nobody wanted that job Fair for point. $2.7 he has done a great job with that program. Uh, that's a different argument. Fair enough. He has. Now you're bringing up something entirely different. But to sit there and say that, you know, Indiana's team in the mid-'70s, folks, that was after Kareem and Walton and, and David Thompson. They evolved. That was, that was 975. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walton I just was don't in think, 72. Go ahead. I get it. I just, I just don't think. And, and, you know, again, people can – can call and give you great teams. They you don't know, try to pair them up with the with the Bobby Knight team uh, of eighty one. I get that, but I just think that it's un, a little unfair to try to compare the player then, the style of play then, to try to compare it now and say that it would just transcend just because they went undefeated and they had good players. That's all. Yeah, listen, uh, you know that Houston team that we're seeing right now. You think? Let me ask. Uh, good job by Tony. You think this Houston team that we're seeing right now? Is better than Duck Cheney and Elvin Hayes' teams? Or how about this team that we're seeing right now? Is it better than Elijah Wan and Drexler that lost to NC State? Do you think this Houston team that's in the Final Four right now, if they played Drexler, Larry Michaud, Michael Young, and Elijah Wan, do you think they, if they played a four game, a seven game series, do you think they win the game? What do you think? You think Drexler and Elijah Wan, two of the great players in the, uh, that we've ever seen, especially Elijah Wan, you think that Akeem would figure out a way uh, to beat? Uh, this this Houston team, don't compare these teams to the teams of yesteryear. The, the, those teams are men. These are kids. Don't compare it. That's not fair. Bill and Chevy Chase. Bill, good afternoon. Your turn. How are you today, pal? What's going on? Billy. Good, Chris. Thanks. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of uh, riff off of all the stuff you've been talking about. One thing people who didn't see that Indiana team don't perhaps realize, that was the best defensive team you have ever seen, especially in half-court defense. They would put you in a straitjacket, and you know how big a UCLA fan I am. That team was unbelievably good defensively. That's number one. Number Correct. two, yep. when, you're, when you're kind of excusing Dean Smith, you said something that wasn't quite accurate, I think. Yes, one, for the first 16 years of Dean Smith's career, only one team from – any conference made the NCAA. So he wasn't at a disadvantage vis-a-vis anybody else. If you want to look into Dean Smith. Well, his disadvantage he, was he was in the best conference in America. That's his disadvantage. UCLA was not in the same kind of conference that he was in. I mean, he had, he had Lefty at Maryland. He had Sloan at NC State. He had, at times, good Duke teams. I mean, you can't compare the ACC. The ACC was the best conference in basketball between 1961, you know, and 19, uh, that's 85. The best conference, but, pound for pound, but, year in, year out. And those first 15 years of that conference for uh, Dean Bill, he had to win the tournament to get into the NCAA. 
Right, but of course, the other side of that is you didn't have to finish first over the regular season. So that can cut both ways. Do this with Dean Smith someday. Go and look. Find me a coach who exited the NCAA tournament more times on the wrong side of an upset than Dean Smith. You will be very hard-pressed to do that. Yeah, he got picked uh, off a lot. Gonzaga, That's fair. Go ahead, Gonzaga. Uh, uh, on Gonzaga, to supplement your point uh, oh, and uh, about, how, about their, their incredible record in the conference, I'll give you a stat. But also, one other thing first, when you compete, I wouldn't even, I don't think you have to compare them to these players, to Al Cinder and Walton and these guys. They don't have Gail Goodrich. They don't have Sidney Wicks. They don't have Swen Nader, Chris. But you know what their record is in 90, what Hughes record is in 95 games against the AP Top 25? I do not. What is it? He's won 41 of them, and he's lost 54. So, so he is 41 against the AP top 25. Wow. How would of I would not know that. Games. Yep. That's a good stat. Now, I mean, you looked that up. Where'd you find that stat? That's a hell of a stat. Where'd you see that one? You didn't do it yourself. Wikipedia. Where'd you find it? It's, it's just in Wikipedia. It, it was easy. They have it. Um, wh- one last point, uh, switching for a moment, if I could, to football. I got to say, I'm really amused to hear how the NFL just approved the um, sale of the rest of the Redskins or Washington Bell call themselves to Dan Snyder. When I can't tell you how many guys I heard, how many sports geniuses, including some guys on this network, talking and speculating and saying they're going to take the team away from him. Yeah, so I thought of the same thing. St- I thought of the same thing. Uh, all we've heard about from the media for years and years and years of how we have to get Daniel Snyder out of football. That's all I've heard. The New York Times, the Nancy, uh, the uh, name Nancy Armors of the world, Christine Brennan. That's all I've heard. Year, day after day, year after year, how Daniel Daniel Snyder's a snake, and we have to get him out. And here it is, the other day, the NFL approves him buying out everybody with the team, and now he's a sole owner. I mean, it's funny. <laughs> 